We're going to do hypothesis tests about the population mean when the population standard deviation sigma is known. Now we're going to be looking at two-tailed tests here. A two-tailed test looks like this. The null hypothesis is that the population mean mu is equal to mu naught, and the alternative is that the population mean is not equal to mu naught. In our example of a two-tailed test, mu naught is equal to 15. The sample size is 50. The sample mean is equal to 14.15. The population standard deviation is 3. And the level of significance is 0.05. Now the first step in any hypothesis test is to calculate the test statistic. The formula for the test statistic is z equals x bar minus mu naught over sigma divided by the square root of n. Now this is the same formula that we would use for a lower tail test and upper tail test as well. Our test statistic is written z because it follows the standard normal or z distribution. So let's calculate our test statistic here. z is equal to 14.15 minus 15 divided by 3 over the square root of 50, which is equal to negative 2.00. Now notice that I went two decimal places here, and it's because we're going to be using the z table later, and the z table uses z values that go up to two decimal places. Now there are two ways of using our test statistic. We could use it with the p-value approach or with the critical value approach. In the p-value approach, we calculate something called a p-value. The p stands for probability, and it's the probability of getting a value for the test statistic as unlikely as or more unlikely than that provided by the sample. Now what makes this a definition of the p-value for a two-tailed test is this part here as unlikely as or more unlikely. So if it was a lower tail test or an upper tail test, it would say something different here. For a lower tail test, it would say as small as or smaller and for an upper tail test, it would say as large as or larger. So the value of the test statistic provided by the sample in our example is negative 2. So we're looking for the probability of getting a value for the test statistic as unlikely as negative 2. So first we want to draw the z distribution, because remember our test statistic 
follows a z distribution. So our test statistic is approximately here. And values of the test statistic that are more unlikely than negative 2 will be the values of z that are less than negative 2, but also the values of z that are greater than positive 2. Now, you can see this by looking at the height of the curve uh, at negative 2 and positive 2. So if you go below negative 2, the height of the curve is lower than negative 2. And also, if you go to the right of positive 2, the height of the curve is lower. So that means the probability of these values are going to be lower as well. So our p-value is going to be both of these areas combined. Now, since the standard normal distribution is symmetric, these areas are going to be equal. So what we could do is find one of these areas and then double it. So we look at our z-table for negative 2. So we match up negative 2.0 with 0, 0, and the corresponding area is 0 0.0228. So this is the area to the left of negative 2. But we also want to take the area to the right of positive 2, and again, since the curve is symmetric, it's also going to be point. 0.228. So our p-value is going to be 2 times 0 0.0228, which is equal to 0 0.0456. Now our rejection rule for the p-value says that we reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So our p-value here is 0 0.0456, which is less than our alpha, which is 0 0.05. So our conclusion is to reject the null. Um, now, since we're rejecting the null here, that means that we're accepting the alternative. So we conclude that the population mean is not equal to 15. Now, the second way of doing our hypothesis test is to use the critical value approach. In the critical value approach, we calculate a critical value. Now, actually, for a two-tail test, there are going to be two critical values. Uh, for a lower tail test and upper tail test, there's only one critical value. But here, we're going to have two critical values. Our first critical value, we write it as negative z alpha half. And it's the value of the test statistic corresponding to an area of alpha half in the lower tail of the sampling distribution of the test statistic. Now let's simplify this definition a bit. Uh, when we say value of the test statistic, since our test statistic follows a z distribution, what we're really saying is 
the z value. Uh, now, when we say sampling distribution of the test statistic, we're saying the z distribution. So negative z alpha half is actually just a z value corresponding to an area of alpha half in the lower tail of the z distribution. Now notice that it says lower tail um, in this definition here, and this is because it's our negative z alpha half. Um, our other critical value, which is going to be positive z alpha half, is going to have the same definition, except instead of lower tail, it's going to say upper tail. So it's the value of the test statistic corresponding to an area of alpha half in the upper tail of the sampling distribution the test statistic. So we have two critical values, negative z alpha half and positive z alpha half. Uh, so instead of having just one critical value, uh, we take our alpha and we split it in two and give that to each of our two critical values. So our test statistic follows the z distribution and on each side of zero we have one of the critical values. And each of the critical values have an area of alpha half Now since our alpha is 0.05, our alpha half will be half of that, or 0.025. So we want to find the z values that give an area of 0.025 to the left and to the right. So let's look at our z table and search for 0.025, which is here. So the corresponding z value is negative 1.96. So negative z alpha half is negative 1.96. And since the z distribution is symmetric, positive z alpha half will be positive 1.96. Now our rejection rule for the critical value approach in a two-tailed test is to reject the null if our test statistic is less than or equal to negative z alpha half or if the test statistic is greater than or equal to positive z alpha half. So if either of these conditions are met, we reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, if our test statistic is in this region or in this region, we reject the null. Now, if it's in this region in the middle, we do not reject the null. So our test statistic is equal to negative two, so it's in the region on the left. Our test statistic is less than our critical value negative z alpha. So our conclusion is to again reject the null. So 
we get the same conclusion for the p-value approach and for the critical value approach, which should always be the case.